Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Damaso Rodriguez. Um, I am a director and artistic director based in Portland, Oregon, and I'm honored to be one of the members of the Encuentro Selection Committee uh, for the last several months leading up to this uh, great event. Um, uh, happy to be uh, moderating this panel today, uh, which we are calling Using Theater to Reframe Immigration. And uh, we have a, a Right now, uh, one of the artists who's presenting, uh, whose work is being presented in the Encuentro, uh, another member of the selection committee, and one of the playwrights uh, closely associated with Latino theater. And we might have another uh, member joining us at some point in the conversation. Um, but uh, I'd love to start out with just everybody introducing themselves and how they're connected uh, to uh, the Encuentro. Um, uh, and a little bit, you know, Jesus, if you can tell us a little bit about your piece, um, and then we'll we'll get into this uh, conversation. Those folks attending the Encuentro have, there are other sessions that are all about talking about a particular uh, production, and these panels are really having a conversation about bigger uh, themes, that, and we can reference the work and other work and our work across our, our careers and elsewhere. So I'll just uh, say, so like I said, I, I'm, I'm a, a director, an artistic director, um, but relevant to this theme, I, I think I, I, I'll add, um, I was uh, born in Miami, Florida to Cuban immigrants. Um, in my childhood, I ended up in uh, Dallas, Texas, and then I lived in Chicago, and then I spent a long time in LA, and then now I'm up in the Northwest here. So um, uh, maybe we can each share our trajectories a little bit as well. I'm going to hand it off to Jesus. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jesus Valles. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I am coming to you currently from Dallas, Texas, but I am living uh, in Providence, Rhode Island um, on unceded Narragansett land. Um, my connection to Encuentro this year, um, it's my first year participating in Encuentro um, and it's been really, really exciting. Um, so many of the people that I've that are presenting and that are here and that help to organize this this uh, this encuentro are like north stars for me as 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 a theater maker and as someone who is sort of emerging into this particular world. So it's it's an honor to be here uh, and on this panel too with like the, this like constellation of, of really wondrous artists. So um, really grateful. Um, in terms of uh, trajectory and the show that that's featuring here. Um, so I come to the Encuentro as uh, as a solo artist, uh, uh, pairing with Teatro Audaz to bring uh, my solo show Undocuments to the Encuentro. Uh, Undocuments is a solo performance piece, um, largely dealing with and documenting my coming to the US as an undocumented person, as a child, um, and the way that the immigration system concurrently allowed me to eventually become a citizen while also creating the infrastructure that allowed my brother to be deported uh, mm -hmm. in 2008. And so the, um, yeah, I think in terms of a trajectory, you know, I, I came to the United States uh, inside of a, of a truck seat that my father decided to gut uh, so that he could, you know, to, to quip on the old standard, give me a better life and found myself here um, dealing with and thinking about an immigration system that really creates personhood along the lines of complicity and submission. And so, um, yeah, super, super interested to, to talk with all of the artists here and think about what that means today. Great, thank you. Um, I'll uh, hand it over to um, uh, David. And I should say that, so I'm playing the part of moderator facilitator today, but David and I are uh, committee members who, uh, this is our panel that we talked about, um, you know, what our questions were going to be. So, but Dave is going to play the role of participant uh, as in, in his role as an artistic director of Gatamia Theater. So I'll hand it over to you, to you next, David. Thanks, Damaso. And I didn't know that you had passed through Dallas, Texas. I'd love to hear that story at some point. Uh, I'm the executive artistic director uh, at Gatamia Theater in Dallas, Texas. And I'm on the steering committee, uh, selection committee for the Encuentro. And I've really spent most of the time, uh, you know, working on the panel here with Damoso. And, uh, and, and I'm here because Academia Theater has, has developed new plays about the experience of human beings who have uh, experienced the, um, the, the travails of, the, of U.S. 
immigration policy and also the stories of, of, of that reflect the lives of, of many of us who are theater makers, as well as our family members, coworkers and neighbors. And that's really, um, and that has become a major thread of Katamiya Theater's work. And I would say since specifically 2011, and, and uh, this has been a, a journey of humanizing the story of, of immigrants, but within a uh, complex, chaotic, and, and often cruel immigration system, um, but with, through the virtues of, of live theater and the possibility for connection and transformation. So uh, Academy of Theater had the privilege of presenting deferred action um, at the Encuentro in 2017. And uh, we were also honored that the um, Latino Theater Company presented the world premiere virtual run of Ursula, or Let Yourself Go With the Wind, that was written and performed by uh, Academy of Resident Company member, Frida Espinosa Miller. And that virtual run took place this last spring. So um, I'm proud to be here with everyone on this panel to talk about this, this important subject to me and our community. Thank you. Thanks, David. I'm going to hand it over to Diana next. Thank you, Damaso. Hola, um, I'm Diana Burbano, Diana Burbano. I'm coming to you from uh, Los Angeles, also uh, the Tongva, unceded territory of the Tongva, the Keys, and the Ash Ahashaman people. Um, I am an immigrant. I came to this country from Colombia. Um, we landed in Cleveland. We And from Cleveland, where my father was uh, studying, he was a doctor in Colombia, and he um, came to Cleveland to do some work, to learn uh, some more techniques, but he, he stayed because my brother was born in Buffalo, New York, and so that ended up being why we decided to stay in America. But my family couldn't take the cold of Buffalo, New York, so we traveled across the country, hitting all the major, <laughs> as much of the country as we could see, like one of those little cartoons, you know, that you see from uh, Warner Brothers, and we ended up in San Jose, uh, I was raised, basically I say I was raised in San Jose, although I arrived there when I was already, I think about 10 years old. And I've always, to me, the, my story has always felt like a ni de aquí ni de allá, because I am, I feel very Colombian, I feel very American, but I'm, I'm neither really in, in the eyes of uh, a lot of people. Um, you know, it's the kind of thing where you go back to Colombia and you get made fun of because you're a gringa and you are here and then you're not quite fitting in with what's going on here either. Um, so that's that's it's something I'm really interested in and definitely something I, I uh, write about in my work as a playwright. I, um, I am very excited and very proud to be one of uh, the Latino Theater Company's commissioned playwrights this year. I'm currently working for them on a piece about um, gender and um, gender non-binary and uh, gender roles. And um, it's called uh, As Girls Go. It's an adaptation of Amor Agravio y Mujer by the Spanish golden age writer, Ana Caro. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. So thank you for asking me. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Diana. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna hand it over now to Yosvani. Hi, Yosvani, I'm, I'm Damaso, good to meet you. Um, uh, and glad to have you here as a representative of the beautiful production We Have Ire, which I believe premieres later in the week uh, for folks. Um, but if you could give us a little bit of your your background and and tell us a little bit about about the production. Well, my background, I'm from uh, from Cuba. Well, first of all, thanks for inviting me to this uh, panel and especially to talk about a subject that I, I so dear uh, think, think of. I'm from Cuba, uh, and I've been here for the past 23 years. Uh, and I know that we, each of us have like different journey uh, in realizing our artistic endeavors. So uh, I came here, um, like I said, in 1999, though I started coming earlier since 94. And it was only my pursuit of, of, of becoming a, a contemporary and also a jazz musician too. So even though I started coming through Stanford Jazz Workshop, uh, where they invited me to teach during their summer jazz program, I uh, I quickly realized that in order to you know to really study the music and to learn from the horse mouth of as we say in 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 as an artist, I needed to live in New York, and then I decided to find my way to New York, and then 
especially to become part of a larger community, a community that was a community of international artists. So um, it was also uh, for me uh, the, the the opportunity to become part of a, a larger Latino community, Latino community in the United States and also in the world because it's you know New York or any city of the United States the point of coincidence for Latino from all over the all over the globe, and. Um, it's, 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 it's been about building community, it's been about meeting new people, about collaborating with other artists as a musician, also trying to learn from the different communities that I get in touch with in New York. And, um, you know, I started as a musician and now I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm an educator too. I was t a professor at, at, um, at the New School in New York and I'm currently uh, teaching at Harvard University and also um, continuing performing with uh, at least uh, five of different projects that's, uh, that I have as an artist. So it's a pleasure to be here. So glad to have you. And can you talk a little bit about We Have You Day? We Have You Day, it's, a, it's a, uh, the best way that I always try to find out. It's a multidisciplinary play and um, because it includes live performance by by a live band on stage and i was the composer of the music that you you hear there there's also dancers and there's choreographer with that, several dancers there's a dj on the stage and then there's the actors so we all are telling the stories uh, of basically afro-cuban afro-cuban artists in their pursuit of their you know artistic career and they all immigrate and 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 is 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 that journey of immigration coming into the united states in the case of paul flores he does reverse engineer because he travels back to cuba to learn about his past and his family uh, but it's about finding yourself in a new place uh, with all the challenges that it post post you know it poses and then at the same time forming community and becoming part of a larger community and larger project. So, uh, you know, like any immigrant story, it doesn't come with, it doesn't come without challenges. And also it doesn't come with, with, you know, believing in yourself and, and understanding a, a larger sense of community and larger sense of, uh, of, of identity as well, especially when you find yourself in a country where there's, there are people from all over the world. Well, thank, well, thank you. you. And, and, and both, both uh, are, am I echoing? Okay. Um, well, both of the, these productions, um, Undocuments and We Have Day, are, are just really beautiful, powerful pieces. Congratulations. Um, uh, so this is for everybody on the panel. For perhaps Jesus and Yosvani, you can speak about the, the, the pieces themselves or your other work, and Diana and David, definitely across your your career and your other projects. I'm curious, so the Latinx theater has a long legacy of plays about the immigration experience, but do you view your production or your general, your work, your productions as part of this legacy or as a departure um, from, from the other work you've seen or encountered about immigration? Do you, you know, on some level, are you, are you part of a, of a certain, you know, trend or approach are you consciously subverting that that's that's what i'm curious about and the question is for jesus or myself everybody uh, but, okay but uh yeah um yeah jesus do you want to you want to try that one sure i can start yeah um yeah i mean i think um in thinking about in documents when 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 the show first started to sort of like emerge um, and the show began as a series of 20 poems that I um, read in front of some friends at the Vortex Theater in Austin. Um, and I was just kind of like, do you think this is a show? Uh, um, and I, you know, I, I, I wrote the piece um, and I hate when people start stories with like after the election, but, but I, not long after the election of Donald Trump, like I think, um, I think I was really, really keenly aware of the kind of um, ticking clock that is immigration policy in this country, right? Like, like everything we saw during the Trump administration was a magnification of all of the systems that were already in place. It, it was about like pulling the trigger on a thing that was already sort of architectured, right? 
Um, and so I think there was a moment where I felt the kind of volatility of, of citizenship as a concept. And I was like, oh, like your, your status could change at any moment. Um, your, your personhood could change at any moment. So um, why leave behind a record that is only composed of birth certificates and uh, past due notices and bills? Uh, why not instead leave like a play behind, leave some poems behind? And so, um, so in terms of thinking about like a tradition, I really like, I think a lot about the work of uh, Vicky Grice, um, who's like a, a really like a mentor and like uh, a soul teacher in a lot of ways for me. Um, and, and in the same lineage, I think a lot about Lori Carlos and I think a lot about uh, Ntozaka Shange and uh, Sharon Bridgeforth and Omi Jones in thinking about solo performance and poetics as like the way that the show sort of happens and how it's constructed. In terms of a larger sort of history of, of Teatro as it addresses migration, I think, you know, reading like reading actos and, and reading a lot of the Teatro Campesino work early on um, when I was an undergraduate student, I think I think it was one of the first moments that I saw policy explicitly named um, in, in a theatrical tradition um, because like, you know, I, I, you can read Chekhov and that's that's cool. And, and I think if you know the dramaturgy behind like a Chekhov, then great, you understand the political circumstances of that moment. But, but what was lovely and, and powerful about like about Teatro Campesino's legacy specifically is the explicit naming of the thing, right? Like this is the system that you are encountering. And so I think for me, in terms of, of how I think about undocument in relation to these things, for me, undocuments feels like, um, my contribution to like a now and here of, of immigration policy. Um, and, and specifically, I think the, the, one, the one challenge I really wanted to take on, and I don't know if the show does it, um, and, and I think that failure is maybe okay, but I think I really wanted to also think about complicity in the system. Um, I became a naturalized citizen, um, and so much of that is due to circumstance, yes, but I also kept thinking while we were doing the show, I was like, Damn, am I the villain? Like, um, am I am I like am I the am I the bad person in in the show? And and I say that because every time that I was excellent or excelled or became exemplary or exceptional, right, all of the things required to gain citizenship, I gave the U.S. the contours to carve the very policies and metrics and rubrics that were then used to deport someone like my brother, who was seen as non exceptional. Um, who was seen as just a labor, a pair of hands, a back. And so I think I think the idea of complicity is something that I really want to invite into my work as I, as I keep writing and as I keep sort of working on this show specifically. Oh. Yeah, does anyone want to respond to that? Or just share like your yeah. view? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I do see. Well, I, I totally agree with the, everything that Jesus said, and because it's, it's a, it's a similar journey that what we had, and especially uh, from the beginning. I mean, not only we feel that, yeah, we're coming out of the same legacy, of the, um, a, the, a, the same theater legacy, the Chicano and Latinx theater uh, legacy, and immigration, and especially because we wanted to portray the the life and and the life of uh, an immigration and a specific immigration from cuba that is never talked about and is the afro-cubans the afro-descendants from cuba immigrating to the united states often when you talked about cuban immigration it just seemed black and white it's like miami cubans and and cubans and then there is then there's the whole um a citizenship and uh, and interests of Afro-Cuban coming into this country, which then they identify themselves completely different. And also they they gravitate toward a more, um, you know, more to, more with the, with the rest of the Caribbean and also with the black American and, and, and is the type of immigration that nobody talks. So uh, we realized that <clears throat> the four characters, which was, uh, you know, it was based actually in, in, the, in the stories of Ramon Ramos Alayos, Lady, Lady, DJ Lady, Paul Forrest and myself. And um, it was born like that. I mean, with a conversation with Paul and trying to figure out how we could talk about these side of the story that is never get to, is never exposed actually. And then, 
to tell the story through their life, the, you know, the experiences of their family, their journey, even like going from their provinces into Havana, and then from Havana finding ways to come into the U.S. and and you know overcome all kinds of difficulties just to to build a a new community and to start really to grow as an artist and. Yes, and as I said before, I see that as a part of the legacy uh, from you know the immigration story, and we were conscious about it. We were really uh, deliberately about yes, we need to. Talk, we want to talk about that. We wanted. We want to let people know what the what you know what the stories and the narratives of these characters, which at the same time they identify with any immigrants, because I mean the, we immigrants share a lot of stories, no matter where you're coming from, no matter who you are, no matter you know what you know uh, how you think about yourself. So um a it was a it was a couple of years in the making because I mean we have to travel to Cuba uh, and travel to each each person's provinces and, and municipalities and interview their families, interview neighbors, and then craft that story, bring it back to the US. And then with the help of Rosalba Rolón, <clears throat> start, you know, writing the story, Paul, and 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 having everybody contributing uh, to the narrative of the characters. Yeah, thank you. Um, David, I wonder, no, I love, I love, I love by the way, you was funny how clear you were about like the intentionality, right? You were aware that you were sort of subverting or kind of lifting up uh, something that isn't, um, you know, seen enough or discussed enough or even known uh, broadly. So that's, that's great. David, I'm wondering as a, yeah, as a producer and in your, in your kind of long, the long form of, of running a company and, and telling multiple stories, how you think about this. Sure. I, I think that um, that when we decided to uh, produce Dreamers of Bloodline in the year, begin developing and writing and devising as a company in 2011, um, we um, we were looking at season selection and we were looking and, and I have this sensation that I felt like I was looking at a lot of fictional and literary stories, and and then I saw a, a documentary with a company member called Una Ruta Nada Santa from San Salvador to the San Fernando Valley. And it was the story of three women and one woman carrying her, her baby um, from uh, El Salvador to um, uh, attempting to enter the United States. And uh, I was speechless. And I asked myself, uh, how, could we, how could we be looking to simply produce fictions or or, or, or literary tales that um, may not necessarily reflect the urgent uh, uh, realities that our community is, was, was facing at that moment. Um, the, we had produced uh, a handful of political plays and the, um, the phenomenal organization, North Texas Dream Team, was a big supporter of our company and we became friends with them. And so we used to go to parties together. They would come to our, our, uh, our cast parties. And so when, when we saw this documentary, we, we felt it was important for us to tell the, tell, to attempt to tell a story about, um, about our own company members. Some of our own company members um, did not have uh, the papers to live in the United States, you know, or under legal terms or, or however we want to describe that. Um, we also uh, have family members that did not have papers, um, uh, uh, co-workers and neighbors. And so it, it, we felt it was important to, to create a story that could, could uh, reflect the experiences of some of the, these people that we love. So, so that is how we began um, this, this um, journey. And, and what was incredible was, was like we were learning through the process of creating a play and the power of, of performing it, um, audiences were also learning and, and experiencing similarly. And people that, that may not have had, could not even name an, uh, you know, a, you know, an ancestor that came from another country, but we were, we were seeing the impact of these stories. And, um, and, and, I, and I think what, was, what we were experiencing is that, pe that people were feeling seen on, on stage in Dallas in, um, in an original 
piece that was based on um, the experiences of the people that we knew. Uh, and one of the most moving experiences was when um, at, during a talk back after Dreamers of Bloodline, um, there was a family of about 15 people and, um, and there was a, a matriarch of that family there. And one of the uh, adults uh, stood up and said, I wanna recognize um, my mother who is sitting here right next to me. Um, she is the main character in this story. And I was that baby that she carried in her arms. And, uh, and all of these children are the, um, are the results of, of, of her journey. And that was an, a powerful experience. And, and, and yet at that time, even we were still just learning uh, what it meant to, to tell this story and to talk about immigration policy. Um, the, one of the other plays, the next play that we produced was Deferred Action. And, and what's interesting about what Jesus was saying is the, the concept of complicity because uh, that play was, was really um, exploring the, the, and challenging complicity. Um, it was the story of uh, documented activists that um, were frustrated during an election year with um, a Democratic candidate for president that was unwilling to talk about full immigration reform. In fact, it was a Latina candidate that these activists were supporting, and she did not want to talk about um, uh, uh, supporting a full immigration reform for 14 million people. And so one of the characters um, was really uh, 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 calling her out for that. And um, through the course of the play, a Republican candidate decides to meet that activist and create a platform that is entirely a far right platform, yet for full um, reform for 14 million um, uh, immigrants. And that created a conundrum of does, 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 do the, does this activist support that candidate for that issue, or does the um, or or does or 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 does he support the the candidate the Democratic candidate that is um, that is not committing entirely to full to, to full reform? So that became the conundrum, and and it was, and I and I think what we were challenging was looking at these politics in black and white terms. You know what? Because they're so complicated, um, and and what does it mean that? Only some people have benefits, reap benefits, um, when others don't. It's a really difficult situation, and each character had a different response to that. So it opened up a lot of conversations, and and it and it educated quite a lot of people, and um, and it really it it that was an amazing experience to see, um, and uh, and and I think that's what I think the power of, of theater can do is that it it not only allows story of, of people to be seen, but allows us to really dig into these very challenging um, political issues, but also these human uh, ethical and moral issues. That's great, thank you. I noticed that uh, Paul Flores who wrote, we have you there, commented about, you know, wanting, wanting the, the work to educate actually about ed immigration um, and, I'm, yeah, is that in your mind um, at the forefront of the story? Do you do you think of that as as mission, or is that a, a yeah? Go ahead, Diana. I just wanted to. Um, I just I do accept that um, what we were talking about. I don't think I've ever seen anything close to my immigrant story uh, on stage. Do you know what I mean? I, I have seen, I don't think I've seen anywhere near the sort of like Paul Flores was saying, the nuance, the scope, the, you know, the conservative Republican, the very liberal, the commune. I mean, there's so much scope in the immigrant story that um, I become really, um, I become hungry for, for more nuance. That's definitely true. Um, I, I, Especially, I mean, for, for me, especially in something that I long to see on stage is the loneliness of what it is to be an immigrant person lost from community um, and 
plopped into circumstances where there are no, um, there is no, nothing holding you up, right? Like I'm, I'm only speaking for myself, but I come from, uh, uh, my family was very much alone here. We uh, didn't speak English. I always say, thank God for Sesame Street because I think that's the only way I learned. Um, but I, I really have no connection for, I had no connection really until I moved to Hollywood and started working because um, we, I didn't, we didn't live in a community like that. And so uh, I just feel this, this sense of loneliness, intense and incredible loneliness in the immigrant um, story that I, I still, I'm not sure I've seen addressed and I would really like to. I know I, I touch on those subjects in what I write, um, but, but that is for me the, the depth of my immigrant story is loneliness and disconnection. So I, I wonder, um, Diana, you don't always write, or do you, is, is that a feeling of being an immigrant, a, a displaced person in your work, whether or not it's about immigration in quotes? I would have to say always. I mean, it all. I always interrogate that idea, um, especially because I mostly write about uh, women like me because that's the subject I know the best about, and and also something that I don't often see portrayed. Um, and it is always, always informs how I look at the world, how I write, my closeness to the the way my family unit works. Um, uh, I think it permeates everything, even no matter what I'm writing. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Sus, what about you? Um, uh, and Yosemani, I'm curious. I mean, in general, like, so you these pieces happen to be about, you know, very personal immigration stories, right? And very personal. Uh, do, you, do you envision, are you working on other work in which that is not front and center? Um, you know, you're, you were called to tell these stories in this moment. Do you, do you think you'll stay on that trajectory? You know, I'm Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I think with undocuments, you know, that um, I actually often sort of find myself wrestling with the the phrase happen to be um, because, be, because I, you know, in some ways for as much as citizenship is arbitrary and, 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 you know, we are all in many ways, sort of like accidents of like of birth circumstances. Um, I also, I don't, it, it's hard not to think about like how keenly this was all designed for us, right? Like, like by design, like like this river ends up splitting these countries, ends up uh, generating like the need for paperwork, ends up generating like who gets to be a person who doesn't. And so, um, I think undocuments, you know, was very specifically and pointedly like a way to think about my relationship to documentation and policy explicitly. Um, and it wasn't even to like honestly. There, I don't think there was anything noble in it. Like I, I actually think it was. A, it's a. It, I think. I think it's a deeply selfish work, um, and I'm really invested in that selfishness. Um, and I think to echo some of, of what Diana was saying, um, uh, you know, it, it's a solo show, and it isn't because I perform it by myself. Yes, but I'm also echoing and co-performing with my parents and my family, who are characters in the show. And I think so much of, of the selfishness comes from that, that really deep desire to, to speak the thing that, that is killing us, right? That is killing us slowly and fast. Um, because at talkbacks, I always find myself, you know, connecting with people who are either directly from like the El Paso Juarez Frontera or, or who are coming into the theater with migrant stories or from mixed status families. And the thing I, I keep returning to is like the, the contract we sign with with the immigration system in the U.S. is, is a contract of silence, right? It's, it's a contract of silence and isolation. Um, and in exchange for your stay, you get to shut up and never and never talk to anyone about what's hurting you. And I think for me, there is like in, in undocuments, like a, a deeply selfish uh, need to to speak and 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 to to be true with people who who share that that need to speak as well. And in terms of like, you know, where, where my work is moving now, um, I think the plays I'm writing now, I mean, a lot, you know, two of them have definitely like a kind of center on, on immigration as, as a theme. Um, 
but I think I am more interested in, so to give you just a small like thing, um, I'm writing a, a piece about like the Kukui um, and like La Llorona, El Chupacabra, da, 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 like all of these sort of like scary stories. Um, but as a way to maybe like reject the idea of like the need to humanize, because I think like, to some degree, I am at a point, and you know, I think like I think about like Josima Reyes, who's also like who've sort of like seen like the decade plus work that a lot of activists have put forth. And it's like, if y'all don't see us as human at this point, like you, you don't want to. So like then, so then like let me be terrifying actually. Like, like let me be the thing you're scared of then. Um and so I think I I migration, I think, is always gonna haunt my work. Um and I and I want to invite other ways of, of of being in that space and having that conversation that does not immediately resort to, um, yeah, like palatable affects or like like things that people can sit comfortably with and like leave the theater with and be like, oh, that was sad. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think well, I, I agree with the Diana, I and mean, I want to touch on in some points that she she mentioned. It's like the the um, the solitude that we immigrant face uh, uh, at the beginning or along the way. Uh, I think it's well, yeah, it's something that that is inescapable because basically you just find yourself in a in a in a place that there is no points of reference. You don't know anybody, and you have to. You have to survive and overcome any difficulties and challenges that society poses to you. Uh, in my case, coming from a family that is actually immigrant family in Cuba, because my family comes from from my mother's side, from Haiti, and from my father's side, from Jamaica, and from Spain, it's a double immigration thing that I, I carry with me. And, and perhaps the the fact that they were immigrants and they always, I mean, we were. I was aware of, immigra of immigration since I was born. Um, uh, push it pushed me and pushed uh, also my brothers and both my both my and my parents to to reinvent yourself in this new place and also to find ways to to create a new community that's that's going to become your family basically, and that has been. That has been the story of my one of my story, but also it's the story of some of the of the characters and and we have it, and is them finding themselves in this other place that they wanted they they really want longing so much to come, but at the same time just to realize that oh we are alone here, <laughs> how now we have to figure it out what is the next step to to you know to to basically to now to understand again what sits to, or to redefine what citizenship means uh, and citizenship in a new place, not citizenship of like, oh, I'm Cuban. No, you're not Cuban anymore. Now you're something else. You're, now you're becoming a whole a citizen of the world, uh, if you will. So um, that is part of the of the piece and, 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 and to see the journey of each uh, character uh, with the the complex relationship also in terms of like politics, in terms of like uh, the mythology, religions, and things that they left behind that, you know, that they don't, that, there's, that th these are no themes that are, uh, are often talked. And also using uh, all of these, uh, I would say, to use, also using all of these, um, imaginaries that they come that they bring from their culture to then understand where we are which is something that uh, we don't talk about it's like how do we understand the new place where we are now it's like do we have the words that explain this world this new world do we have the character that we grew up with that can just like you know explain things no we don't and and we have to basically create it ourselves um so I mean this and that's what I was trying to say that there's a lot of connection with what Diana was talking and also Jesus and then in terms of um the second question uh with regard to if immigration is is, is like would be part of is part of my new project or is something that I feel that I have to do again um I'm working on a new project but it's which is an opera uh, that <clears throat> 
without realizing it, yes, the theme of immigration is there from a whole different perspective because it's like, is the immigration represented by my ancestor that arrived there from different places, but also them fighting to to become citizens there and then finding to to embrace this new place uh, with a national feeling inspired by revolutions, you know, from Haiti, the Haitian Revolution, the French Revolution. And uh, and at the center of it is also social justice. Uh, one of the characters, Aponte, who was a free man back, a, a black, a, a free man of color, who organized the French Rebellion against the colonial system. So, um, Yes, even though uh, I didn't purposefully thought about, okay, is immigration going to be part of it? Because we don't think like that way. Um, I mean, we're just like, uh, we're made out of so many different stories that they just start coming out at the moment that we need them. Um, and yes, it's in a way it is. It's, it's part of the piece too, without, I mean, consciously thinking that, how can I address again immigration in a subject? Now, I was thinking of, of, of kind of as an audience member, um, this notion of of just being called or compelled to tell a story or to, to be selfish and tell the story. That selfish act resulted in what is, I think, a really profound piece, Jesus. Um, uh, so, thank you. I, I, let's take a look at this um, the title of this reframing. I'm just curious what what is that what does that mean and and what 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 are we reframing is there a need uh and uh you know and for for whom I think it's a I I think it's a really important question cuz I I'm listening to to the conversation and I hear um uh, you know a, 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 you know a lot of incredible um, ways of approaching the work that that um, are, are are demonstrate the evolution of how we think about these stories, which I think is is the work of the artist and the work of of a theater artist. I was struck by um, the, the Jesus's uh, um, a work about um, rather than humanizing um, demonizing. You know, uh, the, if, if that if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but is that what you would say? Like creating a, a monster? As a, if 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 you don't see me as a human now, I'll I'll project um, myself yeah, as a I mean, monster. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I think it's that idea of a projection of like of barbing yourself, right? It's like okay, cool. Like I I've made myself as soft and as palatable as 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 I can be for you to have me, and you still don't want me here. So like let like let me be as like large and monstrous as as you think I am. Then. And, and, I, and I think oh. I just wanted oh, no, to just no. quickly jump in and, and also like from my characters, let the women be unlikable. Let them be kind of awful sometimes and let them exist in that way too, which is something that I don't, you know, sometimes we don't see as often either. Like you say, Jesus, let us be monstrous as well, you know, tell those different stories. And and, and so it, it raises a question too. I, I wonder, because uh, it, I'm also curious about, um, you know, uh, humanizing those who we frequently demonize or have traditionally demonized in in our immigration stories within our our genre, because I, I think that I think that even I think I think a lot of the people that are demonized in our stories are often also demonized in in this divisive uh, media uh, hailstorm. Because I, I I'm really curious about what it means to truly have a conversation, truly engage with with people that think very different than ourselves. And I mean, for one, being in a family with with people whose whose political views have prevented us from from speaking for several months at a time, but then coming to the conclusion that that you know you know their family. It's you know I I was born in I was born in the same home as these as, as, as my brothers and sisters and 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 I don't want to lose that. It, it's a really challenging scenario to 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 be in a family with someone who has political views that ha that could harm other people that I love, my of my chosen family. 
and um, and so I'm I'm curious about about also kind of seeing what means the and maybe humanizes a simplistic term, but but to under to to imagine that story, um, to imagine those stories, um, and possibly imagine redemption. You know, I, I think that when we think about our progressive politics, you know, our our politics, you know, are are ones in which we do see redemption. We would not have the abolition movement without considering redemption as a as a as a as a potential end, because with abolition, that everyone, no one is discarded. Everyone has an opportunity. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. So I'm, I'm curious in seeing how our progressive politics actually creates space for those who are, who we may view as completely opposite of progressive. Uh, I'm a, I'm a little bit in that space right now in terms of looking at um, our, our work. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that question going though. And, and on some level, like what's needed, right? What isn't being conv conveyed? You know, I'm hearing nuance, um, uh, more more specificity toward universality. I kind of hearing that from you, Diana. Um, but in general, I feel like we need more stories. Um, uh, but yeah, what 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 is missing? Well, it, I, I mean, I suppose what's missing is, um, golly, so much of it. I mean, so much of it is just listening to all the different stories and all the, and, and understanding. I mean, we say it all the time, right? I mean, how many, I'm sure all of us that come out of our mouth is we're not a monolith. We're not a monolith. I, I don't know how many times you have to say it to um, non-Latino people that, yes, we, we have a lot, in, we have certain things in common, but we also have a lot of things that are not in common. For example, just what I crave to see are things that I see in my own life. Like I write a lot about my neurodiversity. You know, I write a lot about um, I was a really bad kid. I was uh, <laughs> a big troublemaker. I and and uh, I I, I want to see story. I like I like messy stories as well. And um, I, you know, I I was an actor for a really long time, and I played so many. Um, like women with a heart of gold and so many stereotypes. And so I think we were gonna talk about this later, but it's also like, who's it? Who's the gaze? Who's looking at our stories, right? I'm not terribly interested in writing for um, like the white gaze, except that if they wanna come look, I'm happy to open the world to them. I'm not about to translate my Spanish. I'm not about to make it easier on them. And I'm gonna, I like to really challenge ideas because the truth is nobody's ever asked me. You know, I, I walk in a white world. I walk in primarily white institutions, but but people seem to be very comfortable with say with talking and saying things to me without ever like investigating the depth of it. And I, I'd really like to answer a lot of things that would make a lot of people uncomfortable. I, I think a lot of a lot more discomfort in this topic would be um, because they think they know what the story is. I think, and they don't. People, they don't. They don't know. They don't even know what questions to ask if you're an immigrant. I think, um, yeah, I, I, I want to sort of pick up on some of the, I, I've been working through some of like what, what you offer, David, and I'm thinking about like, in terms of like stories that's missing, right? Like I think, um, you know, to to kind of echo back on on what you what you touched on, Diana, about like some of the characters not being likable. You know, like like writing women who are unlikable, right? Like like sort of being like, yeah, like th this is a part of that human fullness. Um, and I'm thinking about like that idea of like the redemptive and and I don't know. I I, I think um, uh, when I think about the work of like who is sort of left out of stories, right? Um, I think I sometimes, uh, I actually like am explicitly and deliberately never thinking about like, you know, like, oh, like what about like, you know, like my Republican cousin who works for border patrol, um, which I think is the, is like the, the story in a lot of Latino families, right? Especially along the border because that's who's working um, uh, CBP. I, I'm always like, let's go the other way, right? Like. Um, a proximity to power 
is already giving that person the stories that they want. Like, like they've already sort of chosen like, oh, th this is actually like we're, we're the, the nearness that I want. I'm thinking about like the other end of that, right? Like I'm thinking about like, um, you know, my brother who who is like, I would say like, you know, one of the main characters of Undocuments was, is um, a, a drunk who's like, super homophobic, bullied me for most of my childhood, um, is, I would say, a misogynist in some ways. Like, I just, like, uh, uh, and by virtue of being a laborer, right, like, all of those things get magnified as the only thing he is. And, and for me, really, like, the question is, how do we get at those identities and, and traits that most often get, um, uh, I'm looking at the most vulnerable point of entry, right? Like, like not the person who's, who has proximity or, or wants power, but the person who actually like is, is in all of their fullness, almost always left in a kind of powerlessness. So like, I'm thinking about the fact that like, you know, like, I think about how many addicts like I I have in in my blood and my chosen family, and how little like how little theater there is that that sort of like talks about and deals with addiction in a way that that is uh, that that gives any kind of redemption at all, right? I'm thinking about I'm thinking about like all of the the laboring people that that so often get sort of pushed aside, right? Like, like I I would like to see more complexity for them, and and I'll offer this last bit. Like I think. I've also had such a difficult time sometimes and, and I understand it. And also like, I always want to push back a little whenever, whenever people start talking about like, or they sort of get on discussions of representation. Um, one of the first figures that always gets invoked is, is the maid, right? Like we're tying our seat of seeing ourselves as maids and then the list of stereotypes sort of continues from there. Um, and I think, right. Like what, what does the really complex maid play look like? Right. Like, uh, my mom has been cleaning homes in the U.S. since she was 12. She's still doing that today, and she's 63. And and all of the worlds that have been invited into our home because of that labor are messy and funny and and complicated. And I'm like, yeah, like I actually like, I I do want to see like a maid play because I want to like I I I, I want to see that world, right? Um, the better I, for me, like a better question or a sharper question is like, um where is the fullness of that representation and how do we use that representation to rehearse the world we want? Um, not just as like a check Mark um, as, as people program seasons. I don't know. That's kind of jumbled, but it, but it's, it's a, it's a thing I'm thinking about. I love that rehearse the world we want. I'll be stealing that uh, credit, credit given. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, I'm thinking about the, again, back to the title of this panel and, in immigration, uh, the difference between like immigration to me sounds is starting more and more to sound like wait no that's policy that's system that's talking point right that's political weapon or prop, um, uh, but m much of our conversation has really been about immigrants and being an immigrant and and those specific uh, journeys and and you know nuances again. Um, and and I'm wondering if that's, you know, I think I'm sure we need plays about about the the political and and or, you know, systemic subject of immigration. But really, what we need is just, you know, hundreds and hundreds of of nuanced plays about about immigrants, which which is where we might start to cross over into again universality and real understanding, um, from folks that aren't specifically Latinx, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's a, here's a question. Um, I mean, what is it that theater can do uniquely? Maybe that other art, art forms can't specifically regarding what we've been talking about or can't a can theater do anything unique? If I can, I'm, I mean, if I can sort of start this off, um, and I want to shout out actually, um, Karamia, um, one of the 
um, yeah, one of the best things that happened to me uh, in, oh gosh, was it 2019? My time is all, I don't know, know when anything happened. Uh, but um, the production of Your Healing is Killing Me that happened with Florinda Bryant the first time at Caramia. Um, you know, if, if you've read Your Healing is Killing Me, you, you sort of like know the the the, the idea that like the, this is, you know, it, it's a manifesto, not a play. It 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 is it is about the act of collective self-defense. And I I I loved when I first read it, and then I went and watched it. And when I went and watched it, one of the first things I realized, and as I've been following Vicky and 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 her work with Garamia, and I've been thinking about like the ethic of togetherness, right? Like that one of the things that theater does really well and, and why, it, why it is so so important is that at a very basic level, like just like with like just with like an organizer brain on, you have a, you have access to a bunch of people all at once, um, which means that like you whenever you talk about a community, like, oh, you can make one right here, right? Like, like what would it look like if we had a day where we're like, cool, hey, uh today, if you want to get and see the show, like um bring a pallet of water bring like some canned food right like um sign this petition like like i i i'm thinking so much about the opportunity for that togetherness and that liveness as as an actual intervention for for the change that so many of our shows talk about and i think watching that happen during your healing is killing me for me was really really formative because i i kept thinking about how you know how the sort of inherent theatricality of so many of the the direct actions that were performed by by a lot of migrant activists, um, especially like in, in Tucson, you know, where like with and and Phoenix, where like they were like stopping buses with their bodies, um, and and I think yeah, the, the, there's something about liveness and and the act of congregation in a theater that that at, at the at base level provides like collective power, right? It, it provides people then and there. And I think for me that that is that is for me like a, a really potent spark for for like how is theater important to these issues is, is yeah like like you have community revealing itself in very explicit ways like the bodies are there the breath is there hopefully the, hopefully the story that has been told is inspiring the spirit to to be willing as well. I want to talk just a little bit about um, I, I something I, I want the theater to do that I think it is really capable of is to um, free the natural voice of uh, Latinx, Latine, Latino people and let them just exist with our own voices. I mean, I spent a lot of time having my accent flattened, my vowels fixed, my lisp worked on, and I'm so passionate about just letting, um, letting our accents exist the way they exist exist and having people hear them. I mean, I do a lot of acting teaching, you know, and, and so I have my, my, my Latinx kids have these very, not, not all of them, of course, I'm not trying to stereotype, but there are small voices and it's all very quiet and it's really hard to pull that sound out because it's a community that's been used to being silenced in so many ways. Like if it's not the fact that we have this accent that maybe is not as whatever as another one or that we speak bilingually and you can't understand us and that is somehow offensive. I mean, so the voices get shut off. And I think one thing that at least I think if we decolonize like theater studies and, and um, places where our students go is to allow them to use the natural voice and just put it into the blend of what is quote unquote acceptable in the theater, you know? Like why can't Hamlet sound like, he, sounds like he comes from East LA, you know? And just let that be what it is. That's something I'm super passionate about. And I think that's something that the theater is especially um, apt for. Well, I think that there is no immigration or immigrant story that is not involved with politics. And I mean, it's like you are, whether you like it or not, you're, polit you're a politician. And I mean, I can talk as a composer and as a performer and musician and some, um, which is, is not different that, than theater. And I, I really like to use, um, the stage at that, at this unique moment in which I have to, to, to talk to, to, to your audience, which becomes your congregation or becomes your community or becomes your followers and the people that you can actually tell what you think about the world and what you think about, you know, what art is and, you know, where you come from 
and what the world looks like and what the world you would like and what the world should have looked like that we haven't seen yet. So uh, I like to, and, and it's something that I cannot separate from. I'm, I'm a political person and so it's like, it's something that I enjoy doing too. But um, it's actually in that, in, in, in that uh, pursuit that we can really explain our complexity. We can explain that, yes, we're religious, but we are spiritual. We have a spirituality too, which is something that we don't see here a lot. There's a lot of religious here, but there's no spirituality, something that I've, I've, I always saw. And, but we can't say that we have a different mythology. Yeah, we can't say that we come from a different place. We have a different uh, idea of, of the origins of the human beings. And is that complexity that what really makes a difference, you know? It's like, and we try to find ways to talk about it from different perspectives. Uh, but, but, I mean, the, what we do on the, on the stage is the only way that we can get people, we can convert people into like, okay, yes, I got it wrong all the time. Yes, you're not what I what, what I thought you were. And, and yes, you are as complex as any human being because it's like life, I mean, any human being is complex. And, and oftentimes, it's, you know, the immigrants is the, the person that is the other, you know? So it's like how we stop being the other and we're just, just we are who we are and we don't have to explain ourselves and we don't have to, to tell people where we come from and how, you know, why we think the way we think. So um, these are the things that I like to see, you know, and, and, and these are the same, you know, play or, or, or musicians or artists that I follow, the, the ones that are trying to push those boundaries that basically, basically keeps us separate rather than you know unite us in in a way i think that's a i think those are really interesting points I, I i think it's interesting to think that um that we're not going to convert uh, uh, uh audience members and, and maybe we don't want to uh, that um the you know i i th you know i think that reframing you know immigration we can say i think i i keep thinking about re-signifying um, narrative. I think we need to create more narratives. We need to create more stories and proliferate um, our own stories as we create them. And, I, and I've been thinking a lot about resignifying narratives. Um, and, and, and really, and, and I think that where I am, because a lot, because when I look at all of a lot of our work around immigration, I, I also think that we're I think we're we're wrestling with the problem of power, and 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 I think that what's and and I think for for me who was born in the United States, I think often the sto the stories of immigration are are speaking to me about the 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 ways in which I have to contend and face power in some form, um, and and I think that. And I and I, I have to say I, I think at this at this moment in 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 my in my life as as a I, I, as an activist uh, as well as an artist and as well as a producer um, I feel that I'm compelled to ask myself how to become intimate with that which I hate and and what does it mean to 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 be close to that um, because maybe that which I hate isn't so solid and fixed. Um, maybe it's may, maybe it's maybe it's as as flexible and and desirous of, of change as I am, um, and so I, I think that that and so I think when we're looking at this, I, I think the complexity of the world we live in, I think is is clear. It's it's much more complex than I've I've believed it to be, and I think that um, and I'm thinking and I'm hearing that our theater can is, is is eager to move in, in in towards these complexities and seeing these kinds of new possibilities and that's and that's what i'm hearing is is that's how we we're using theater to reframe um uh many of the issues that we're, we're writing about or we're performing about love that and what what was the word you used instead of reframing what was it uh resignifying you know essentially using the same, even narratives that we may be opposed to, 
because just by speaking the narratives of say the other side, you know, I, I think we can recalibrate that narrative. I, I, I think I'm challenging myself to see how our narratives aren't fixed um, and, that, and that there's space with them to move and re-signify their, their meaning based on our intention and discovery. And then what does it mean to be in conversation with, with, um, with unexpected audiences? Um, or, or maybe even audiences that aren't even there. I, I, I in the audience experiencing our, our stories. I, I, I just, um, and I think this becomes a feeling from feeling so um, trapped by power. To be quite honest, is that, um, is that, what is it? What would it mean if I abandoned the, uh, the dichotomy of this polar relationship? of me versus power and is there another way to enter that relationship um and i'm not saying that that will necessarily solve anything i'm just curious what that means to step into that a different relationship than an us versus them dynamic all right let's see we have a, a Question from Daniel Jaquez, is immigration the problem or is it the toxic patriotism? Interesting. Nations are the problem, I would say. Like I, I would argue like, yeah, the idea of country is the problem. Um, uh, during, during the process of making undocuments happen, um, I, uh, Rudy was sort of talking, Rudy Ramirez, who's the director, was talking you through like the the sequence uh, that happens leading up to the um, to the uh, the naturalization ceremony. And one of the things that we sort of, you know, came to uh, were thinking about was the way that like that we so often work really hard to be liked by countries, um, and and work really hard in the service of like. Of forcing ourselves to like countries and and countries by their very nature are are you know invented enterprises in the service of making wealth for whoever has the most power in that nation right so like it you know it, it's difficult to sort of be here and 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 there are times where i meet people who are really like viva mexico arriba way uh, and i'm like that's great and also like I personally like, like, you know, like thinking about my family, like trajectory, like we left that country because that country didn't want us either, right? Like the people, the people who, who, who have the most power in that country were starving us. They, they, they were neglecting us. The, the police were working to actively like cover up the murders of thousands of women in that desert city. Um, and, and, and they continue to do so. A, a country is a thing built in the service of gaining wealth for the people with power there. So for me, yeah, like, as you know, to restate Daniel's question, like, I, yeah, immigration isn't the problem. Like, immigration is the natural pattern that we have always known as as creatures of, of mobility, right? As, as creatures who sort of like uh, move and 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 migrate with seasons and and long to be elsewhere all the time. Um, and it's the moment that something becomes a country, a thing with borders, a thing that demands citizenship, that the problems begin. Um, I think so much often about how like, yeah, whenever I say I, mix, I miss Mexico, like what I'm actually saying is like, I miss the land that was that is now known as Mexico. Like I, I miss the mountains that are there and I miss that particular desert and I miss all of the people that I love there. But like, do I miss Mexico as a nation? Like, no, I like, I actually wish like countries didn't exist. I wish. I wish I, I wish I wish movement was was as free as like you know like birds and other migratory animals show us that that it can be and should be. So yeah, I would say like it it the problem is the nation and its concept. Uh, it's yeah, it's really powerful, deep, deep um, question, and and I'm gonna check out this in the chat here. So um, Elisa says, when I think of immigration, I often feel 
into the Brazilian Portuguese word. Um, who, pr who can pronounce it? Saudade. Saudade, thank you. That particular feeling of melancholic love and longing. Do any of you let's see resonate with the concept of saudade? And would you like to riff on that feeling? So that fe that feeling of melancholic love and longing. <laughs> well, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Diana. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I think it's more complex than that uh, because uh, yes, melancholy and 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 saudade is, is I think it's just one layer of uh, of many things that uh, we can uh, that we can you know we can remember we can would like to be in touch with but it's interesting at the same time that i mean as 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 i always thought and, and jesus was saying that yeah i mean immigration is a natural thing too so a part of the immigration process is also to find to find a new place you know and to find yourself with a new community uh, because otherwise you're never going to be happy where you are or happy is not the word you're never going to be you're never going to feel right in the right place uh, and and you know even birds when they go uh for you know when they when they go into different places they don't i mean they don't go to the warmer climax to think about what they left in the north you know <laughs> they just uh, go and embrace that place that they are and I, i i look at immigration more like that you know it's like we're here But as I said to everybody, as I said, I always said, uh, I like, you know, I'm, I'm a person that I like to travel and I like to move around the world. And I like to be in a place where there is like creativity. And, you know, in, in all years and before, to be in the Mecca was like the place that you want to be as an artist because there was so much happening. And um, yes, I'm in New York now, but I could be in Burundi. I could be whatever that creativity is 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 in in, in, in uh, is a bullion so uh, i would think like it's it's a little bit more complex and it's more dynamic because uh it often happens that even when you find yourself in a, in a, in a, in a new place uh, this gives you now opportunity to dig deeper to, to some of the stuff that you're really interesting interested in in and to really go and research more of 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 um subjects that you really want to 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 to, to deepen so uh just to respond to the question i think yeah i think that you know this is just a little part but it's more it's more of a complex <laughs> it's more of a complex subject and um and i know i mean i'm not trying to say that uh that um it's it's a, a It, it will be, that you're seeing it as a reductionist uh, uh, way, but I would add it. I will invite you just to think about how naturally the animals immigrate, and they don't they don't look back; they just go there, and you know, and they keep moving around the world. Like you know, it's like in the same way that all of the the, the, the fish in the ocean they always almost go around the, the 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 globe, following the currents, and you know, finding themselves in different places. And just to, to riff a little bit off that, Yosvani, is, um, I mean, I have a longing to go places I've never been. That's my deep longing. I, I don't feel a need to stay. I don't like staying in one place for very long. I want to see things I don't know. I, I have a huge curiosity. It's always interested me that so many uh, people, especially in this country, or I suppose all over the place, but they don't leave, they don't go further than, you know, 50 miles away from they were where they were born. And um, that is interesting to me because I, that's a completely different experience from what I have. I, I that's my longing. My longing is to to go to go someplace else. Yeah, what a what a reversal that you know being an immigrant becomes stigmatized and demonized, and but when it could just as easily be. Um, A, a, a position of honor because of, of sort of someone who's who's brave and goes on a quest, you know, and begins again. Uh, uh, 
it's a, just I, I'm kind of reflecting back on this the the toxic patriotism question, and I I go, well, gosh, I I can't I can't say, oh, it is it is patriotism. What what it brings to mind is um, that in uh, one of the ways to maintain power is to identify an other right as a threat right and then associate yourself with that which can protect from the threat and so we've seen we've seen that play out and so if i was to identify the core issue is that that it's just immigration across generations immigrants across generations are are so useful to a corrupt um maintain, maintaining of power um and this this notion of of longing I think uh, um, I think it's why so many of the the, the s- stories about immigrants I find really uh, moving and, and kind of resonant and, and sad only in that melancholic way is that um, and and kind of I also love your point of view Yosvani and and Diana about like you know moving on and and not looking back like the birds but there's something in us as humans where I think we we long for something that doesn't exist anymore right and we associate it with a place but. As soon as you leave it, or your people leave it, or your family members leave, that thing you're longing for doesn't really exist. Um, and I, and I do think that makes for some some complex storytelling, which is why we're often called to tell these stories. I love it. Yes, I love speaking. You're speaking of birds and metaphors here. Absolutely. There's been some good good stuff in this today. Um, so what else, what else is on, on this group's mind? We promised 90 minutes folks. Oh, we got more. Um, Diana, can you please say more on your thoughts of how to uplift Latinx voices, particularly those, uh, that might sound quiet when asked to speak in a high school classroom, asking as a working teaching artist. Thank you. Oh, Thank you for asking about that. Yes, it is. A, it is. Um, I mean, the first thing we need to know is that it, that a lot of the times that comes from trauma. So uh, I think as a teacher, as a facilitator, you're going to have to be very um, mindful that you're not adding to the trauma by saying "speak up" or you know by um, by. It, it's a delicate balance of 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 freeing their voices, right? Freeing their natural voice and freeing, giving them the opportunity to speak. I mean, how do you do it? You you work with them, you find material that they resonate with. There's a lot of fantastic, fantastic new play. I mean, look at the writers we have in this room. If you go on the new play exchange, you'll find Latinx, Latin A uh, writers of all kinds. And there's a lot of stories. I think find things that resonate with them, find the writers that are writing for them and their stories, especially, um, I mean, if you're, if you're a teacher and you have a whole class full of, of immigrant kids, then I think it's incumbent upon you to find work for them, not just recycle, you know, enemy of the people and say, Hey, let's do that. Um, that's part of the whole, one of the biggest things I think is that we do want our own stories told, you know, that's, that's kind of why I always talk about like a takeover of what the theater is. Like, I I don't, I'm not interested in a pyramid. I'm interested in this. I always talk about like specificity of story means I'm listening to a story about a Cambodian uh, man who was um, imprisoned and tortured by the Cambodian government. And um, then he, he's an immigrant, moves to America. And um, his daughter finds out later that he was in a rock band, right? A, A Lauren East Cambodian rock band. To me, that was a story of connection for me as an immigrant. I have more in common with that story than I have with a lot of other things that I see in the theater. And but that has nothing to do with me, really, right? I'm 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 Colombiana. I I there's just a lot of differences, but I mean those connections. That's what I'm excited to see. So if you have a very specific story, um, that that is. Maybe we've never seen it before. I'm not that interested in like seeing what your version of, of Death of a Salesman is. I'm interested in seeing your unique story, just like Cambodian Rock Band. Um, and, and I'll come see it no matter who you are, if it's so specific that it's going to just give me something new to look at. And I don't think like Cambodian Rock Band is not written for my gaze particularly, is it? I, but 
nevertheless, it opens up a world to me that I'm so excited to be in. And I think that's what, especially as educators, that we need to open up that world to um, our students and so that they, they can see these stories and how they connect to them. And, and their voices will free up once they feel like they're being seen. I can just like just briefly like tag in on that. Just uh, so I, I was a high school teacher for um, for nine and a half years, and um, and one thing you know I, I think uh, when it comes to like including sort of these different types of stories that that open up new doors and rooms, I also think a lot too about like um, how often we we sort of use the the phrase voice um, to really specificate locating like speaking. But I'm thinking about like like other ways that like that that idea of a voice can be sort of like brought in or invited into the classroom, right? Like, like I think so much about the students who are really quiet and have a ton to say, and they're saying it through the music they compose or write, or like through the illustrations they make, or like the, the yeah the, the marginalia that you find on like papers and tests that sometimes you're like this is stunning, like this is really beautiful like work, um or or, or the writing they produce, um. And so I think too about like what what does it mean to also think about which I think is also a good question to ask right to of, of, of theater too and then theater we make like um, what does it mean to invite different registers of voice um, in, into the making space right that 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 sometimes the voice is found in in a piece of music or in like the line break of of a poem on the page and so I also think a lot about like yeah how how do we think about like polyvocality in the classroom too. I'm thinking about how theater is more, in essence, you can make it happen faster than other, other um, performance mediums. I'm, I mean, music too, but, I, uh, but specific to that question about what can theater uniquely do, but let's say film and television it can't and isn't, you know, um, it's a, you know, that sentence you just said about what, what, what could we do to, to redefine that, that word and how to bring more, uh, what, what did you say, poly, what was, what was the phrase, poly? Polyvocality. Polyvocality, right? Like we could make that happen um, faster perhaps in the, uh, the arts right now, nonprofit arts are, uh, for sure. All right, so we have just a few minutes left. I'm, what's what's on your mind? Uh, not, you know, ninety minutes into a conversation, like what are you taking away? Panel, it's been really great to meet meet you all and be in this space. That's for sure. Well, I'm thinking a lot about the um, the the tools that we have. Is is a uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about your healing is killing me, which is uh, the structure of that production is so powerful because uh, you realize at the end of the piece that the performer has bring bringing you to get us together as a community, and that is how we are going to heal ourselves um, or and, and protect ourselves. Uh, so theater as um, theater as organizing, theater as community building. Um, but still, community, I mean, theater in its in its um, ancient ways, I think, is still effective. and i and I, I think that's also I think where Katamia is is at as well is that we're we're still exploring um, mask performance, physical theater, um, performing outdoors and and what does it mean to experience joy and to create stories that may not be based in language, that may not be based in a text, but that are um, uh, t telling stories in these multimedia forms, these historical multimedia forms, not necessarily digital. Um, and so, uh, and then the ever evolving um, uh, frame of reference, changing the, the context in which, in the frame in which we see um, uh, the, these stories in this work. Uh, I walk away with with just a, a lot of um, a lot a lot of ideas and possibilities about what we're doing. I'm just really really thankful for all of the feedback of everyone on the panel and their and their and, their, and what they've shared. Definitely, thank you. Y Yosvani uh, had to leave and sends his best uh, uh, to everybody uh, for for joining today.
So I'm wondering, yeah, Jesus, Diana, what's what's a what's a small small takeaway from today? Uh, with you? I love hanging out with all of you. I think it's been a really interesting uh, afternoon, and I I feel like I've I've just I have so much to think about and so much to write about and so much to um, to take to my other students. You know, uh, I, I just want to leave people with just um, uh, what I said earlier: ask questions about if you discover. I mean, if you discover somebody's an immigrant, um, maybe just talk to them a little bit about it. About everybody's everybody's immigration story is incredibly different, and I think uh, just just having that out into the world as something that you ask about, you don't know. Um, I'd love to talk to you about it. I, I promise you nobody's asked me, except now that I'm on the panel, nobody's ever asked me about it. So it's it's really been quite nice to be able to just riff on it a little bit. What about you, Jesus? Um, yeah, I think uh, a, a sort of takeaway that I'm that I'm leaving with today is 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 continuing to think about right like like what what does it mean to to reframe and and, and to resignify and i'm thinking um about you know uh, how um how located and, and seen i felt um in hearing diana you talking about isolation and, and silence and and in hearing yosvani sort of talk about and focus on like the inevitability of 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 the politic right that like the political is actually always inherently present because like um, I am here because of a set of laws and, and, and so much of my life has been choreographed by, by legislature. Um, and that's inherently always part of the story. Um, so, and I think like a last sort of thing I'm thinking about too, is just like, um, yeah, I, I am often asked, you know, um, if you could go back and like, you know, give advice to your like nine-year-old self or seven-year-old self, like, what would you say? And, and I, uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about what it means to be like a, uh, a sort of like time traveling coyote to myself. Like, like, what does it mean to actually go back to those small versions of myself and smuggle them into the present? Because I think they were a lot more courageous and, and brave than I am sometimes uh, as I get older. And so, yeah, I, 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 I wonder in what other capacities we could be um, the best kinds of coyotes to each other. How do we smuggle each other's work and words and hopes into our spaces. Um, how how do we carry each other um, into the every room we walk in? Um, I hope that's that's the sort of um, migratory spirit that we continue to to move along in. Mm, migratory spirit, I love that. Thank you, uh, Jesus. Thank you, David. Thank you, Diana. Thanks to our interpreters today. Thanks to Yosvani. Um, uh, congrats again, Jesus, on your performance, your show. Um, I want to remind everybody about the 6 p.m. Uh, uh, screening presentation of Cancion para un Niño. Uh, oh, my God, I lost the name there, Eddie. Uh, and uh, so check that out. And again, things are streaming uh, after they, they premiere. Um, so folks, spread the word about these conversations and these productions. Good night, everyone. Thanks again. Bye.